Traveling around Japan by train is one of the most exciting experiences during your adventure here. From riding the clean and quiet local trains to experiencing the sleek and impressive Shinkansen or bullet trains, some of the best memories people have are from riding the country's amazing transportation systems. However, before you can enjoy riding these impressive trains, you have to first understand how to navigate them, which can be a little difficult to understand at first. And with the JR Pass being no longer affordable, you are faced with an even bigger hurdle of how to get around without using that once useful pass. However, by the end of this video, you will fully understand how to book your own Shinkansen tickets, know which seats to pick, learn the best Shinkansen lines to get from Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto effectively and quickly, and many more essential tips. So without further delay, it's time to master Japan's bullet train system. If you are overwhelmed with the endless things to do while you're planning your trip to Japan, then I have the solution just for you. And that good news is my business, Hidden Japan Journeys. After years of living in Japan, I have gained a wealth of knowledge about how to easily get around and help plan your Japan trip as efficiently as possible. If you're interested, contact me at my business email, which is located right here, or you can check out my website in the description below. The first and most important thing to understand is exactly how to book your Shinkansen tickets. Now, for the sake of this example, we'll be booking a green car Shinkansen seat from Tokyo to Osaka. And if you're wondering what exactly a green car seat is, well, don't you worry, because we will cover that in a little bit. Anyways, to start off, the first step is you'll need to find the Shinkansen ticket machines, which are clearly labeled above their respective stations. Once you're there, the first thing you'll want to do is change the language to English, which you'll be able to do by pressing the globe button, or the English option will be clearly showing on the main screen. After selecting the correct language, you'll have a choice of deciding between purchasing an unreserved seat, a reserved seat, or a green car seat, which you'll also find in the reserve seat selection as well. And before we get to the part where we break down every seat option available, we're going to table that for later and just go ahead and finish up the whole process of how you book your tickets first. Going back to our example, once we have selected the reserve seat option for the green car, we will choose our starting point, which for this example will be Tokyo Station, and then our end point for this example will be Shin Osaka Station. Next, you will get the basic options of choosing the date and time you want your train to depart, and how many people you'll be buying tickets for. As a side note, if you have children that are below the age of 12, then you can select the child option for them. But one additional thing to note is that if you're going to be reserving green car seats, then your child will be charged the full price. On the next screen, you will see quite a bit of information to process. Starting from the left of the screen, you'll see the exact departure and arrival time for the respective trains, and as you move to the right side of the screen, you'll see the seat availability for both the regular and green car reserve seats. On the same screen, if you see a green circle over the option you want, then that means there is plenty of space for this car. If you see a yellow triangle, then that means there is not a lot of room left and you run the risk of not being able to sit together with your group if it's bigger than two people. And finally, if you see a red X, then that obviously means that selection is sold out. Next is an important step for people who have oversized baggage, as this will be the time that you can select the option for an oversized baggage seat. One thing to keep in mind is that you will only be able to bring luggage on board that meets the criteria displayed below. So be sure to keep these parameters in mind before you decide to bring your luggage on board. As we approach the final steps of this process, you'll need to reserve a specific seat. Similarly to the car availability, the green circles will indicate which seats are available and the blanked out spots will show which are full. Finally, once you have all the details filled out, you simply pay for your tickets with cash or credit card and out your tickets will come. Now that you finally have your ticket, it's time to break down all the information on that ticket to make sure that you don't miss your train. At first glance, your Shinkansen ticket may appear to be pretty complex. But while the abundance of text on your little Shinkansen ticket might seem a little intimidating at first, it really isn't that hard to understand. To start, all the pertinent information will be in the middle of the ticket, where you will find your train and seat number if you reserved your own seat. Similar to an airline's flight number, you will want to locate the exact train line name and the number associated with it to locate the right platform. So in in this example, we can see that the train number is Kagayaki 1515, and the departure time of this train is 1824 or 624 p.m. Now that we have identified these two pieces of critical information, we can confidently find the boarding platform by matching it up with the track number, which will be displaying your train line and number. Once you're at the correct boarding platform, all you need to do is identify the train car that lines up with your reserve seat, find the seat number associated with your ticket, and that's it. You are 
are now on the correct train and on your way to your next adventure. Now that you know how to get your tickets and get to the right platform, it's time to go back to one of our first important steps and break down each of the seat options that are available to you. While understanding the difference between the unreserved, reserved, and green car options are important, the difference between each of them are pretty straightforward. The unreserved seat is the cheapest option, allowing you to get a seat in the basic car of the Shinkansen, but you won't be able to book a specific seat. While it is the cheapest option, as the name implies, it is a first come, first serve seating option. This means if you aren't one of the first in line to claim a seat and it's a pretty full train, you're likely going to be standing until you hit your station, which is not a very fun time, especially when you consider it could be a two to three hour trip. So if you're trying to save money with the unreserved seat option, make sure you show up to the train platform well in advance so you can be at the front of the line and have a higher chance to claiming your own seat. The next up is the reserved basic seat, which is the same class of car as the unreserved, but with the option to save your own seat for the duration of your trip. And finally, we have the green car seat, which is the equivalent of a business class seat on an airline. The biggest benefit the green seats offer as opposed to the regular seats are what you would expect. More space, higher quality seats, and higher quality amenities. This is definitely worth the slight bump in price if you would like a more comfortable and enjoyable ride to your next major stop in Japan. And with less people in the car due to fewer seats, you can also expect a much more quiet and peaceful ride as you travel to your next big destination. The only real downside to the green car seats, if you want to consider it a downside, is you must reserve these in advance. That means you cannot miss that specific train you reserve the seat for, or you will have to go through the whole process of getting another ticket again. For some last thoughts considering which seat is the best for you, when it comes to choosing between a regular reserve seat and a green car seat, I am always going to choose the green car seat over the regular one. The extra seat space and higher quality amenities in green cars are so much better than what you would get in a regular Shinkansen car. Not only that, but you are usually able to book the green seats much closer to the departure time than the regular seats, because just less people are going to be buying the green seats as they're a little bit more expensive. Now that you know the pros and cons to all of the typical seat options that are available to you on a Shinkansen, it's time to go over more essential tips you need to know before you hop on your first bullet train. The first tip to know is to make sure you're bringing plenty of snacks and drinks with you for your Shinkansen ride. While the food carts used to be a common occurrence on the Shinkansen, they are now slowly being phased out. But the reason they are being phased out is because there are just dozens of different food options you can choose from right next to the boarding platforms. You can pick from typical convenience store foods like onigiri, candies, and chips, or you can go for the more hearty meals like the famous full course lunch boxes known as the ekiben. If you do happen to forget to purchase food for your Shinkansen ride, then you might still be in luck. Some Shinkansen will still offer the food services, especially if it's a Shinkansen on the Golden Triangle, which is Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka. However, don't hold your breath because not all of them are going to have it anymore. Another important tip, especially if you're going to be traveling around the three major cities of Japan, is to understand the three Shinkansen lines that you can take in the Golden Triangle route. The Nozomi, the Hikari, and the Kodama lines. The Nozomi train is the fastest of the three, which can travel from Tokyo to Osaka in as little as two and a half hours. The next in line is the Hikari, which adds another 30 minutes to that same ride, and finally is the Kodama line, which will take about four hours between Tokyo and Osaka compared to the Nozomi's two and a half. But one thing to keep in mind about the Nozomi is, while it is the fastest train, it is also marginally more expensive than the other two options. However, the difference in price is so minimal, I would just go ahead and purchase a Nozomi line 100% of the time, as every second matters while you're visiting Japan. The next major tip for riding the Shinkansen is to not be late for your boarding time. Unlike an airplane that has a little bit of a window to board the flight, when the time on the train ticket says 18.24 or 6.24 p.m., it means you need to be on the train by 18.24 or you will miss it. These trains will wait for no one, and if you do not get on the train by that exact minute, you'll have to go through the trouble of getting another ticket, which, as I mentioned before, can be especially burdensome if you have a reserved seat. On top of all of this is these trains will only stop at the station for less than a minute. That means at least a few minutes before the train arrives, you need to be at the platform, ready to go with your bag in hand as soon as the train arrives. Want to get a front row seat to appreciate Mount Fuji in all of its glory? Well, don't worry, because I'll tell you the exact seat you need to book. If you're heading 
toward Osaka from Tokyo, then make sure you book the seat E or D for that train. These seats are closest to the window and will provide a perfect view of Mount Fuji as you speed on by. And my final tip for you is that there is no need to stress about booking your Shinkansen tickets way in advance. One of the most common misconceptions that I hear is people think they need to book their Shinkansen tickets at least a month in advance, kind of like an airline ticket. However, I'm here to tell you that that is definitely not the case as there are several bullet trains that depart the station every hour. There are so many bullet trains that depart the station every hour that I usually just book my Shinkansen either the day before or even an hour before. There's just that many seats available at most times. However, one word of caution is if you have a Shinkansen you want to book for the weekend or a very busy Japanese holiday, then yes, you might want to book those a few days in advance to make sure you get your seats. But aside from that, you'll be good to go. And that's about it. While there are many more tips I could offer about riding the Shinkansen effectively, I wanted to keep the video concise and make sure I only hit the major tips for people traveling around the Golden Triangle in Japan. I will probably release more Shinkansen tip videos in the future once I find another good opportunity to do so, but I feel like this should be enough to help the majority of you for now. So with all that being said, I hope you found this video useful and I hope you enjoy your trip in Japan. If you would like more help planning your trip to Japan, then contact me at my business email right here or check out my website in the description below. Like this video if you found it useful. Subscribe for more content about Japan and check out my affiliate links in the description below for when you plan your next trip in Japan. Alright, that's gonna do it and until next time, I'll see you then.